is up, Virginia Jets fans? This is your club president, Adam Bartolo, recording live, as always, from the studio apartment in Newport News, Virginia. It is week seven, Jets at Broncos, 4 p.m. start time. Jets don't get a whole lot of late games, so remember, 4 o'clock. It will be the start time for this game. All right, you know what it's time to do. We're going to break down these matchups. So let's start when the Jets are on defense and the Broncos have the ball. I want to give you a couple of numbers here that I'm really excited about. The Jets now have 48 sacks in the last six games, uh, or basically over the season, third in the league. Over their last three games, they've had 31 sacks, number one in the league. And also, over the last three weeks, the Jets are allowing just 15.7 points per game, second in the league, and they have five interceptions. That's the best in the league. The Jets defense is rolling, is what that means. Now, the Denver offense, on the other hand, they're not rolling. They're just kind of sputtering on a very boulder-covered uh, hill is what they're doing. They have scored 16 points or less in five of their six games, and they have six touchdowns in their uh, last five games. Translation, they ain't scoring. They're last in points per game, last in red zone offense, last in total touchdowns, and 30th in the league on third down conversions. So that begs the question, what's going on with this, uh, you know, this Broncos let's ride country offense? Well, Russell Wilson has been a great quarterback, but he has a slight tear in his uh, latissimus muscle. That's the back somewhere. And in his last game, he really hurt his hamstring. Now, as of right now, he is a game time decision. It is either going to be him or Brett Rippon playing. I got to be honest, I think I would take my chances with Russell Wilson right now. Uh, if he is hampered, if his legs are in, in trouble, if he can't run, you've taken away a whole lot of his ability to be a great quarterback. Now, at running back, we're going to get to the offensive line in a moment, but at running back, also a very controversial situation. Melvin Gordon. Uh, who came over from the Chargers, he's been around the league for a few years, has fumbled three times this year, has just one touchdown. But their genius head coach, Nathaniel Hackett, son of former Jets offensive coordinator Paul Hackett, who stunk, he was the most conservative play caller I've ever seen. Uh, you know what? Gordon has not been that good, but Nathan Hackett is going to declare Gordon as the starting running back. But watch out for Latavius Murray, who was just signed literally about a week and a half ago. And he had the bulk of the carries in the Broncos' uh, most recent game. So um, it'll be interesting to see how the Broncos divide up these uh, carries at running back. Now at wide receiver, uh, number 14, Corlin Sutton. He's a good one. He's leading the team in targets, catches, and yards, but he has only scored one touchdown. So he's moving the ball down the field but not scoring. Number at number 10 is Jerry Judy, came over from Alabama. He was drafted from Alabama in the first round. Hasn't had a great year. He, he's been very inconsistent. 17 catches on 36 targets, for uh, and he only has two touchdowns. So he has not quite been what they wanted. But the main reason this offense is struggling so much is the offensive line being completely inept. So here's what it comes back to. It's not just the players. It's also the coaching. Before the season, the Broncos let go of Mike Munchak, who was their offensive line coach. They replaced him with a guy named Butch Berry. I'll give you all a moment so you can uh, Wikipedia him. Now, the reason they did this is they wanted to, Nathaniel Hackett wanted to implement a zone blocking offensive line scheme, and that's just not what Mike Munchak wanted to do. They tried to hire a coach from Green Bay. Green Bay wouldn't allow it. They promoted that coach, so they went with Butch Berry. Well, their left tackle, Garrett Bowles, is out for the season, and since then, it has been a revolving door of tackles. They tried Calvin Anderson. That didn't work. Uh, they've Now they're moving Cam Fleming, I believe is a former Patriot, over to left tackle. but He's more of a right tackle by trade, and they're putting a guy named Billy Turner in at right tackle. And then on the inside of the offensive line, that's interesting to look at also. Dalton Risner has been under fire from Broncos fans. So has their center, Lloyd Cushenberry, who a couple of years ago was rated probably the top center in the whole draft. It has not worked out for him. And probably their best offensive lineman is uh, Quinn Miners. And uh, number 77, he's a very fine right guard, but he has not practiced much this week. He's injured also. Translation, this Jets defensive line can wreak havoc in this game. I'm talking sacks, strip sacks, a whole lot of pressure. I'm telling you, the Jets defense has the chance to have an absolute monster, monster game. 
And uh, and also, just uh, with their offensive line stats, Russell Wilson has been sacked 20 times in just six games. I'm telling you, Denver goes three and out on their first possession. You'll be, you'll be hearing a little bit of grumbling uh, in the stands uh, from mile high. So I'm excited what this Jets defense can do. Now let's, you know what we do, flip the script. When the Jets offense has the ball against the Broncos defense. Now, Denver has a very formidable defense. They're good against both the run and the pass, a little bit better against the pass. They've allowed 16 points per game. That is third in the league. 5.6 passing yards per play. That's second in the NFL, only behind the undefeated Philadelphia Eagles. And they've recorded 19 sacks. That's the fifth most in the NFL. Now, at the defensive line, I love DJ Jones. He was a free agent this past season. I wanted the Jets to sign him. Number 97's got 17 tackles, three passes defended, three tackles for a loss, and two sacks. Their best pass rusher is number 55, Bradley Chubb from NC State. Go Pack Go. He has five and a half sacks, four tackles for a loss, and two forced fumbles. If the Jets offense wants to uh, move the ball down the field, if Zach Wilson wants to have a good day at quarterback, it is up to this offensive line to stop number 55. It's paramount. And then you also have uh, linebacker Baron Browning, number 56, very good edge setter against the run. He's got five tackles for a loss, two and a half sacks. Uh, also a linebacker, Josie Jewell, very good inside uh, tackling linebacker, is questionable for this game. Randy Gregory, who was brought over from Dallas, another good pass rusher. You won't see him. He's on injured reserve. But the, the probably the best part of this team, best unit, is the secondary. You've got Pat Sertan the second, who, shockingly, wears number two. Uh, don't throw in his direction. Uh, he, uh, he is a lockdown cover corner, I think maybe – Top five in the league, definitely top ten. Avoid him uh, however you can. They have a very good safety in Justin Simmons, number 31. Kareem Jackson, number 34, is aging a little bit. You could go there, but if you go outside, uh, target uh, one of their rookies, Ronald Darby, uh, their veteran. He's out for the season as well. So just avoid certain any way you can. Now, what the Broncos, you got to figure the Broncos will do is, is put eight in the box to try to stop the Jets' running game. The word is now out, stop Brees Hall, make Zach Wilson beat the defense. So that is why my idea is to try to set up a screen pass or two for Brees Hall or for a tight end. We saw last week the tight end screen to C.J. Uzama. He had two uh, offensive linemen in front of him. It worked beautifully, particularly the screen passes to the left. So I think you could do the same thing here against Denver because they are going to do everything they can to take Brees Hall out of this game. And so that is kind of my thoughts on the Jets' offense. Now let's go through another couple of game notes. I feel like I'm talking about this every single week. I know I sound like a broken record. I know I do. But I'm going to talk again about third down. Guys, I know the Jets are on a winning streak. I know we're excited, but there are things that have to get better. Last week against the Packers, the Jets went 1-for-11 on third down. That is not good enough. In their last three games, all wins, they're just 12-for-37. They have got to do better on third down against the Broncos' defense. And one of the ways you do that is you don't put your offense in third and nine, third and ten, third and long. Okay? So that is huge for them. This is interesting to me. Denver is the most penalized team in the NFL, and this is one reason I think the Jets are going to win this game. The Broncos have taken 54 penalties. That's nine per game, the most in the league. As far as kicking goes, Brandon McManus has made 14 of 17 field goals for Denver in that thin mile high air. I think Greg Zerline could have a big game for the Jets. Greg the leg in that thin air. Uh, he, I think he could kick the ball 60 yards, just hopefully straight. And then with special teams, especially kickoff coverage, the Broncos are not doing very well. Uh, they are the sixth worst rated team with kickoff coverage. I think Braxton Berrios can have a big game. I think he could bust a, a kickoff return past midfield. So just I want to summarize basically how I feel about this game. This is the first time I think we could say definitively the Jets have a clear advantage at coach. I don't think I've been able to say that yet. This is a game the Jets should win. I know they've had the distraction of Elijah Moore, and that's why I think it's a very good idea that he is just not not only not playing, but not even traveling to Denver with the rest of the team. We've got good mojo right now. We cannot have a situation like this distract it. So Denzel Mims has his opportunity in this game. 
I'll be very interested to see how much time he's going to get. His first time being active this year. So while the Jets are getting a lot of love, they're not favored by the spread, but a lot of you know, media experts are picking them to win. Let's see them really handle prosperity now. You know, the, it told me a lot about Robert Sala and the coaching staff that they handled Green Bay as well as they did. Let's see them do it against Denver in a conference game. All right, now let's go to our club notes. We've got trivia this week. Uh, the category will be jersey numbers. So I'm going to mention a player and then just tell me what number he wore. Of course, it will be multiple choice. And once again, the winner of the contest will win a $20 Jets gift card to the official Jets shop. If you're interested in playing, let me know on Sunday. We'll put the names into the hat and we'll uh, draw three players. So you don't have to worry. <laughs> Just come on up and have fun. It's multiple choice and worst case scenario, you'll have a great time. You know, we make it fun. And again, we'll have door prizes. We'll have 50-50 and again, a 4 p.m. start, not 1 p.m. I am so excited for this game. Let's make it four in a row. I can't wait to see you guys and go Jets.